Okay, it's a two minutes past 9 a.m. So I think I will uh, start with the uh, first lecture of the day. So today we are supposed to start talking about OpenMP tasks. So there is actually some programming, a task based programming today. So it is uh, divided into two parts. First is OpenMP Task Basics Part 1. And then I have OpenMP Task Basics 2. And each one of them, there are sort of hand on So there will be a break. Uh, between these two lectures and that break is going to be somewhat longer than we had yesterday yesterday so there is more time to do do these and then there is an uh, example called alio factorization and that is uh, slightly larger hands-on where you are applying some of these techniques that you are learning today to an actual actual numerical algorithm where you could hopefully see some actual effects that you get from the task-based processing all the hands-on yesterday and the, also the hands-on during these first two lectures, they are so simple. They are like toy examples, so you don't really see any uh, performance benefit there. And as said yesterday, most of these tiny hands-on, it makes sense to run them either your local machine or in the lock-in node. But the uh, this example alio factorization, that is a big enough uh, problem that you either want to run very tiny test examples with small matrix sizes and looking node to see if you code runs and then you actually want to see how it performs, then you want to submit the jobs to the, uh, one of the compute nodes because uh, other, otherwise things will run really slowly because uh, there's looking nodes have a lot of users and they are also slightly uh, crippled in the sense in the sense that they run slower since we are trying to discourage people from running actual production jobs on the locking node. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, the learning objectives for the first lecture is to learn the basic terminology of that comes when it comes to open MP tasks, and then learn to use the task construct that is used to create explicit tasks in an open MP. Then we will also a little bit discuss how the data sharing rules behave when we are dealing with tasks. Then we will learn how to construct a task graph in a tree based manner. That this should be a tree here, that is a typo, not, not tree, but tree. Based manner, and then learn how to construct task graphs in a more centralized manner, and 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 then how to wait for certain tasks to finish their execution, so synchronized execution. In the previous lecture, I had this important notice here indicating that the Kevin and locking nodes have the uh, open MP num threads variable, environmental variable set to one, thus forcing the number of uh, open MP threads to be only one. And I told you that you should go and set it to some reasonable volume to login node so you can actually see some level of parallelism there. And then, of course, I noted that you shouldn't use the login nodes to run any longer jobs, it's just small experiments and compiling stuff. Uh, but then I also told that there is no need to do this in uh, compute nodes yesterday, but it turns out that I was actually incorrect once I checked, double checked this thing. It is also in login nodes, uh, compute nodes that have this variable set to one. So you have to set this variable to the number of cores that you have requested yourself. And there are two ways of doing it. The first one is that you simply unset this variable. So it, it has no value. And in that case, the uh, OpenMP implementation will attempt to use all available cores. And, and if this is uh, the first approach is that when you use explicit argument for as run or as patch, thus re requesting the entire node. So in those cases, the easiest approach is just to unset it. So it will use all the cores because you have requested the internal node for, just for yourself. If you instead are using the CPUs uh, per task argument for slurm, where you are specifying how many CPU cores you want. In that case, you should set the OMP num threads to equal this invalid variable here that comes from slurm, and it should be equal to the value specified here. So this the second part is something that wasn't discussed yesterday. This was something I actually discovered uh, this morning when I was uh, just rerunning some jobs and realized that actually now I don't know if this happened after some update, but it seems that this variable is set to one also in the compute nodes. But that's it. So when you go into this example alpha factorization, please refer back to this important notice here, so you actually get some uh, reasonable performance. Okay, and then the actual materials. So first, uh, we have to talk a little bit about terminology when it comes to OpenMP tasks. And these are just directly copied from the OpenMP uh, 5.0 specification. So they are a bit technical, but uh, I decided to use the proper, proper definitions for all the terms. Uh, 
So they define task as a specified instance of executable code and its data environment that the OpenMP implementation can schedule for execution by threads. So OpenMP, it sees the executable code, so the implementation, and then it also sees the data environment. And in that case, the data environment basically tells you what is the input and what is the output in a certain sense for a task. A task region is a region consisting of all code encountered during the execution of the task. So task region is the task implementation itself. Then we have something called implicit tasks, a task generated by implicit parallel region or, gener or generalized when a parallel constant is encountered during the execution. Uh, then we have something called initial task, an implicit task, again, associated with the implicit parallel region. And finally, we have explicit tasks. That is a task that is not an implicit task. So from this, we can conclude a couple of things, which is that each uh, implicit parallel region and each parallel construct uh, creates a set of implicit tasks, which means that you have already yesterday done some task-based uh, programming, but you still know that it, there was that is actually the way OpenMP has reorganized itself says introduction of tasks. That when you have parallel region and then they have the threads executing the parallel region, they are all the threads are actually executing the tasks where the task region is the parallel region. Then there are two terms that appear numerous times when you read the OpenMP specifications. So the first term is binding thread set that is defined as the set of threads that are affected by or provide context for the execution of the region. And the second term is binding implicit task, the implicit task of the current threat team assigned to the encountering threat. So uh, most MBI constructs have a binding threat set that defines the involved in, threats involved in the, uh, in the, uh, in the construct. So for example, when you're inside the parallel region, then the binding threat set is the current team. So the uh, threats that are executed in the parallel region. And, and then this binding implicit task is related to the fact that we had, every time we have parallel region, we, it, it, the OpenMP implementation creates a set of these in, in, in implicit tasks. So, so in that case, the threat that is executed in parallel region for it, the binding implicit task is the one, the implicit task that was created when the thread encountered the, uh, the parallel region. Then, uh, as you remember yesterday, the tasks can be related to each other in various ways. So in OpenMP, uh, there is uh, something called current tasks for a given thread, the task corresponding to the task region in which it is executed. So for thread, always has its current task, it is current executed. Then they can be child, child tasks, which are defined as a task that is a child task of its generating task region. So this means that the tasks can actually, if there is a task construct inside a task region, it can create a child task that is a child task of the task that generated it. So you can have this kind of nested hierarchies of tasks where tasks have a child tasks and the other task, child tasks have other child tasks. And for this reason, there is also a sibling tasks, tasks that are children tasks of the same task region. So if a task that creates two child tasks, then these two ta child tasks are siblings to each other. So that is how you define the tree, like a structure that you get when you, when you have the ability to create child tasks. And then there is also Descendant task, the task that is child task, child task of a task region or one of the descendant tasks of the region. So if you have this tree structure of a child tasks, then for the topmost task, it has a child task and then every task. And then finally, okay, I'm sorry, I'm having some issue with my mouse here. And finally, we remember yeah, from yesterday that a child task of other tasks doesn't necessarily mean that there's any dependence between them. So that's why there is separated, they define a task dependence, an ordering relation between two sibling tasks, the task depend, depend task and previously generated processor task. 
the task dependencies is fulfilled when the precessor task has been completed. And then there is dependent task, a task that because of a task dependency cannot be executed until its, its predecessor task has been completed. So we have task dependencies and, and then we know that there is a task that is dependent on some earlier task and it has to wait for the earlier task to complete its execution. So these are basically the same uh, terms that we discussed yesterday, but, but, in, but it just happens that just the way the OpenMP specifications are written, they use these very specific terms to define every, everything very clearly. And for this course, there is no really need to understand, remember all this terminology. It is just that if you go to OpenMP specifications to get more information about specific OpenMP construct, then you might realize that knowing what these terms means is, is, is very valuable. So let's now go and actually look at some code. So the simplest way to create an explicit task in OpenMP is the uh, task construct. And, and for it, it has a pragma called a pragma OMP task that then accepts a set of clauses and then we have new line and followed by a structured block of code. And what happens here, what happens when a thread encounters this uh, task pragma, it is going to generate a task from this structured block and then it may do one of the two things. It may execute the task immediately or it may simply move on to the code that follows after the structured block and then put this task into a task pool from which one of the other tasks in the team can later on pick this task and actually execute it. And a task is always bound to the innermost parallel region. So if there is uh, some sort of barrier happening in, in the end there, then it will wait all these uh, tasks that are generated inside this parallel region to be completed. And if you happen to encounter a parallel uh, task construct outside the parallel region, then it will just get executed immediately. So it has no effect. It, it has only effect when it's inside a parallel region. Uh, the task construct accept a set of clauses. So we have uh, this if that some of them are already familiar. So we have the if you can uh, disable the generation of the tasks. You can set the default uh, data sharing rule. You have private, first private and shared. And this all looks uh, very familiar. And, and, and only thing is we know that, that the data sharing rules behave slightly differently when it comes to tasks. Uh, but that is something that will be discussed uh, in the next, uh, in, within the next five minutes. So let's go and look at the simple hello world program. So we again have just print app hello world here. And we have uh, created a parallel region. And inside the parallel region, we will do pragma OMP tasks, meaning that all the threads that, end, that are created at the beginning of the uh, parallel region now we'll then go and each one of them will create a task where the task implementation is just this uh, print of line. So the thread, uh, the master thread comes in, it spawns the team of, a team of threads and each one of them then goes and uh, creates a task and they were either direct, they can either directly execute the task or then if they can just put the task into a task pool and from which they are then later on picked up and executed until we then end the part, exit the parallel region. And then after that point, all the tasks that were created uh, in, inside the parallel region are now completed. And the output is not that surprising. We will simply get the, the line hello world printed as many times as there are threads in the, uh, in the team because each thread in the team is going to create one of these tasks. Then we come to data sharing rules. So this is again a pretty similar example as before. We have this a number variable declared outside the parallel pragma here, and then we create the task. And inside the task, we will simply print out the value of the number and then increment it by one. And again, the output is not that surprising. You can see that things are printed in more or less arbitrary order, and then some values will appear multiple times because as the same thing as yesterday, uh, these uh, tasks are reading and writing 
into uh, from and to into the variable number in an arbitrary order. And this can lead to situations where two tasks read the variable more or less simultaneously before either one of them has a chance to modify the value of the variable. So in this case, conclusion is that all the variables that are outside declared outside the polar region are shared by default as before. Uh, but the thing that place where things are a bit different is that if we move this uh, definition of the variable number inside the parallel region, but outside the uh, task region. So, so in this case, what is happening is that this variable is first private by default. So all the variables that are declared inside a parallel region, but outside the task region are first private by default. And therefore the output of the uh, program is uh, not that surprising. We will do the first private thing where, where the task is created, it is going to copy the value of the variable, variable number into, into a private variable with under the name and just copy the value there. So nothing, uh, nothing different there. And then I have the first hands-on for you, where you're supposed to modify this early example in such a way that you protect this incrementation with the critical construct and thus make sure that only one task is allowed to modify the uh, variable, the shared variable at any given time. Uh, in the early examples, each thread in the, in, the, in the team created a task. And this can be somewhat handy so you can introduce some level of parallelism into your software, but it's a, uh, but that, that, that is not always very, very, very convenient to do it in such a way because uh, so sometimes you have you want to generate you want to have a situation where it's just one thread that is inserted in all the tasks, and then all the tasks that are left over are then going to actually execute the tasks. And the easiest way to accomplish this thing is to use this uh, single construct that was it was a situation that the single region can be executed by only one thread, and that's it. No other threads can be involved in a single region. So we can have this previous example where we have a parallel region again, where inside which we are generating the tasks, but then we will add this parallel OMP single construct here that specifies that this region here is actually being executed by just one thread. And at this point, you might start to think that, okay, if this part here is been executed just one thread, then there is this one thread that can actually execute this task. But it just happens that the uh, binding uh, thread set of the uh, single region is the, uh, is the is a binding thread set of the parallel region. So on the, from a task perspective, even though only one thread is executed in this section here, the, it is still all the threads that were created at the beginning of the parallel region that can be involved in the execution of the tasks that are generated here. And, and then the last thing you note is this a no wait clause. So you remember from yesterday that this will remove the uh, implicit barrier from the end of the single region. And the reason why it is done here is that there is already barrier in, in at the end of this polar region here. So if you don't have this no wait clause, then we would just have two barriers at the end here for no uh, obvious reason. So this is something you see quite often in uh, OpenMP examples that start with the parallel pragma OMP parallel immunity followed by pragma OMP single, then you will see this a no weight that is simply re removes the one redundant barrier from the end. And the output of this software is not that, that surprising because we have just one thread inserting the tasks, then there is going to be just one task inserted, but this task can be executed by any of the tasks and threads in the current team. And then I have a little challenge for you there where you're supposed to write the program that creates 10 tasks. And it's, it's one of these tasks that's supposed to print out the thread ID that is executed the task. And for this, you should look at this hint I have provided here. This tells you how you can actually get the thread ID of the thread that's executed the task. Uh, then, we come to the barriers. So it is sometimes necessary to wait until earlier tasks have 
finished executing. So you can be sure that all the results that tasks are computing are ready for to be used for something else. And again, it is just this pragma omp barrier that we saw earlier that in the yesterday's concept waited for all the computations, all the threads in the team to reach the barrier before any of the threads in the team are allowed to continue to execution. In case of tasks, it also waits that all the tasks that were created before the barrier are executed. And just again, a simple example, we have a parallel region here where we are creating two tasks. And between the two tasks that are created, we have a barrier. And the result is, as you expect, is that first all the hello merge lines get printed for the first set of tasks here. Then there's a barrier. And then all the goodbye lines get printed from this second task. So in barrier case, it, we wait, simply wait for all the tasks that were inserted inside the parallel region to finish before any of the threads are allowed to move past the barrier. Uh, the next topic are then the child tasks. So let's look at a simple example where we have them. We have parallel region and, and inside it, we have a single region. So it's just one thread in the team is going to actually execute this region here. And then we are going to create a task. And inside this task, we are going to create a child task. So these two task fragments are nested inside each other. And, and then after creating the task, it is then going to print out this high align. And then we come back, back out from this task implementation. So now we are inside the single region. We are going to print hey. And then outside the parallel region, we are printing goodbye. And what you notice happening is that first we will get this hey printed. So it seems that what happens first is that this outermost task gets get executed entirely. So it is going to output its value. Then after this, we can see that, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. So what seems to be happening first at, at this thread that is inserted all the tasks is going to insert the tasks and then print its own line called hey. And only after that, what happens is that actually this other mode task get executed by one of the threads in the team, and it is going to print this high line. And the last thing that happens is that this child task get executed and it prints the hello. And then we come out of this parallel single construct and we print the goodbye. And since there's a barrier at the end of this parallel region, also at the end of single region, we will end up printing the goodbye. But if we run it again, you might notice that what might happen is that this hey gets printed first, but then we get the hello. So it seems that this hello, hello task here, this child task can sometimes get executed before the task that generated it. So the, the, you, you cannot rely on the fact that the child task would get executed before the task that generated it get executed. So we need some sort of way for the wait for so the child task to, to finish their execution. And for that, OpenMP provides a pragma called task wait. And what it does is that the, it will basically just force the uh, thread that is executing the task to wait until all the child tasks that were generated has been executed. So if we now add this uh, OMP task wait pragma inside the outermost task here, after we have generated task, child task, we know that now what is happening is that we will always execute a child task before the thread that is executed this outermost task is allowed to finish its own execution. Uh, then I have a little challenge for you here where you're supposed to parallelize this uh, simple code that computes uh, Fibonacci numbers using tasks. And, and there is a situation where you basically end up executing each inst it's done in a regressive manner so you are supposed to have each regressive call to the FIP function to be an individual task. So then you have a situation where a task is going to always generate two child tasks. And then before you can do the addition at, at together to two earlier Fibonacci number that were generated by the child tasks, you have to add uh, a task, uh, task weight construct between them. And 
that pretty much concludes the uh, first lecture. So now I'm uh, going to give you, I would say uh, at least 20 minutes to uh, finish the hands-ons. And please let me know if there are any questions or I, if I should re uh, explain some things more clearly. Okay, after reading through some of the Q&A comments, I believe that there might be some uh, minor confusion how the uh, OpenMP tasks work. So, when you, when, you are not, when you are not inside the parallel region, then you have this one thread execute the code. Then this one thread is going to encounter an OMP parallel programmer and thus start a parallel region. And for this parallel region, OpenMP runtime system is going to provide it a set of additional threads to execute the uh, parallel region. And then inside this region, any one of these tasks is free, any one of these threads is free to create tasks. And what happens when the task is created, then the thread by itself may execute the task completely. So the thread is run sequentially by one thread. So there is no parallelism inside the thread. The other approach is that the thread will simply create the task and put it to task pool, from which some of the other threads or the same thread can then later on pick it and execute it. But once again, the thread is being executed, uh, the task is being executed by only one thread. So there is no parallelism inside the tasks. Each task is executed sequentially. And the parallelism arises from the fact that you can have multiple tasks executed concurrently and independently from each other. 